Good afternoon and welcome to worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And we begin with the first two verses of hymn 798, Will You Come and Follow Me? our sins in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. By water and the Holy Spirit, God gives us a new life, and through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God forgives us all our sins. Almighty God, strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. We continue with, Lord, listen to your children praying. Our gospel lesson for day, today is from the 21st chapter of Matthew's gospel. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, 
Why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same, and he answered, I go, sir, but he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him, and even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the risen Lord Jesus the Christ. We have all heard stories about second chances, and of course some of the more well-known stories that we hear are stories of love and passion, you know, stories of addicts and cancer survivors and widows and widowers and ex-cons and many others who have somehow been given a second chance and they've made good of it. And there's even a faith-based website devoted to this, I found out during this last week. I like the stories of Thomas Edison who seemed to give himself those second chances. The story is that it took him a thousand tries to figure out exactly what to use for that little filament in the incandescent light bulb. And uh, after 90, 999 second chances, he finally got it right to where it worked. A reporter asked him, how does it feel to fail 1,000 times? Well, Thomas Edison replied, I did not fail 1,000 times. The light bulb was an invention with 1,000 steps. And I think that is exactly how we th should think about our discipleship. Our life in Christ is many, many, many steps. In fact, even more than 1,000 steps, if you want to think of it that way. And the reason that we can be safe in saying that is that Jesus has given us second chances. And that's what today's gospel lesson is about, second chances. Leaders ask Jesus, by what authority is he doing the things that he is doing? And for us, that's obvious. You know, we know the whole story. We've studied the Bible. We've heard these stories many, many times. We know that God gave him the authority. In fact, if Jesus wanted to, he could have said, I gave myself the authority because he was God himself. But Jesus knew that he could not answer the religious leaders directly like that because it wasn't time for him to be arrested and put to death yet. He had a few more things to do during that Holy Week. So he posed the, a question to the religious leaders. And he asks the religious leaders, did the baptism of John come from heaven or was it of human origin? And as Jesus often did when he asked questions, the leaders and even his disciples who spent a lot of time with him are not always sure about how to respond. And these leaders, they argued with each other, and they could not answer the question. And, you know, unbelievable. Can you imagine, you know, looking up to Jesus and saying, I don't know. And that's what these leaders did. And it seems that the leaders were stuck between their religious beliefs on one hand and secular beliefs on another hand. They wrestled with two questions. What does God expect from me? And what does society expect from me? And those are two questions that we still deal with today. Now, we're here in this church building, and many of us have been here for a long, long time, or in some other church building, we know what the answer is. We know how we're supposed to live our life. We know whose authority we are under. 
But society puts demands and pressures on us sometimes too. We're tempted to spend our money in ways that we really don't need to. We're tempted to spend our time worrying about me rather than worrying about others. We're tempted to think about our way of thinking rather than other ways of thinking. And what Martin Luther refers to this as, sometimes we're thinking good, sometimes we're thinking not so good. He refers to us as simultaneously saint and sinner. We are sinners because we have this self-centered failure to trust God. We do not want to trust God. We want to have it our way. Even though we pray in the Lord's Prayer, thy will be done, we have such a hard time with saying, God, yet yeah, we'll, we'll let it be your way. We want it our way. But then we are saints. Because of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven of our sins. God has given us many, many second chances. And because of these second chances, we can say very assuredly, very boldly, that we will inherit the kingdom of God. We will inherit the kingdom of God. And that's exactly what Jesus is telling us. He told the leaders back in the uh, temple that truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. Now that would have been foolishness back in those days to say that the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God. But that's what Jesus said because Jesus is giving them a second chance. But I also like the, the little deal here that he does not tell the religious leaders that they're not going into the kingdom of God. He's just telling them that the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. So these religious leaders who at that time failed to believe in Jesus as the Son of God, they were also being given a second chance. So the good news is that all of us are given second chances. That is the way of God. Through the death and resurrection of Christ, God graces us with the kingdom of God. God graces us with the condition of being simultaneously saint and sinner. And that is how much God so loved the world. Amen. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, you have graced us with your forgiveness, your compassion, and your love. You have filled our lives with second chances over and over again. We ask that you fill us with your spirit so that as we answer questions in our lives, we can accept your authority in every yes and no that we encounter. We pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we will continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for friends and neighbors and family. Teach us to love one another as you have loved us. Amen. Amen. Wonderful God, thank you for the trees and animals, for the sun and moon, and for the whole world you have made. Amen. Amen. 
loving God, we know that you hear our prayers and we ask you to take care of the people we love. Thank you for loving us. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, thank you for this holy meal. May it help us to be more loving and to follow you more faithfully. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Earlier, Pastor Mark said these words over the bread and the wine. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And now let us join in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have fed us in a way our hearts can understand with the saving body and blood of Jesus Christ. Enliven us by your presence in this meal, that we may be your presence in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. And we close with amazing grace. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.